Welcome to this video. So my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. That is in England in the United Kingdom. And in this video, I wanted to go over really how meteor showers are produced. So you're probably familiar with what a meteor is. It's when a small object passes into the atmosphere of the Earth, it burns up in the atmosphere. We see this kind of bright streak. Bigger ones obviously get more like a fireball. So that is a single meteor, but how do we actually get the meteor showers? That's what we're going to have a look at. Now, hopefully with this video here, you can see lots of small meteors occurring. And this is kind of reminiscent of a meteor shower. This was like a meteor cluster that was captured and you'll probably just about see them. You see these um, fairly short streaks there. And a meteor shower basically just means that you get a lot of meteors all kind of around about the same time. So in one evening, you may get hundreds of meteors all kind of in the same sort of part of the same sky, really. And that is what a meteor shower really is. It's not just a single meteor. You're going to have a very large amount of meteors all occurring around the same. So this is basically just a snapshot of the video we just saw, and it shows you the trajectories of each of those meteors. Now, the interesting thing about a meteor shower is they will all appear to radiate from the same point in the sky, the same location, basically. So if you have a look, if you were to draw those lines back up of the, the streaks that they've caused, they would have a common sort of location. They're all occurring kind of in the same part of the sky. And this particular one, again, with the video we just saw, or the animation, if you can actually see that, although it's quite faint, was this was captured by the Norwegian Meteor Network about a year ago from now. And it was the Torrid Meteor cluster, basically. So this happened during the, the Torrid Meteor shower, essentially. And you got quite a significant amount all occurring fairly quickly after one another. And again, you can see that they all appear to come from the same location in the sky. Now, they're normally named after the constellation they actually originate from. So this one here, the Gemini, they actually originate from the Gemini constellation. And you can see there the, the yellow cross is the radiant point. That is basically where they originate from. So if you were to find this constellation, so in, this occurs basically in December. So around about the time of the peak time, or it happens actually in and around that time anyway, you find the constellation of Gemini, and then you just look there for however long you want to really. And you'll likely see meteors radiating away from that particular point in the Gemini constellation. So they're always named after the constellation they actually uh, they apparently appear to originate from. And you've also got the Persid one, and this is from the constellation of Perseus. Again, same point, you've, they radiate from some point in that constellation. So if you can find the constellation, then you've got a good chance of being able to see some meteors if you know when it actually occurs. And just to show that actually there's quite a lot of them occurring in the year, in fact, nearly every month has a meteor shower associated with it. And this is taken from the Royal Museum's Greenwich website. And they've actually got a calendar for 2023, which, to be honest, is going to be replicated for a few years as well. It might change one or two days on the specific date of the peak, but it's going to occur around about the same sort of times each year. So you've got all of these meteor showers occurring in, well, throughout the year basically but lots of different ones there's some really good ones there there's some actually very faint ones that people are not that familiar with but you can always have a look at this and check out which ones are going to be interesting to actually see now the Gemini one actually is caused by the asteroid 320 Theton, and this is an asteroid but it's actually got a comet-like orbit so it's not a comet but it moves like a comet and it behaves a little bit like a comet. So it's a kind of a bit of a crossover, really, a bit of a weird object. But anyway, it's the comet-like orbit which is responsible for creating the meteor shower. And this is the one responsible for the Geminid meteor shower. And the parent one for the one from the Perseus constellation actually relates to the periodic comet 109P Swift Tuttle. Again, this is actually another comet, and it's a periodic comet, which means it's been observed multiple times on its orbit essentially so it's gone around the sun multiple times that we've actually observed and most of the meteor showers relate to something like this it's going to be a comet now why is that the case well 
Comets are typically icy objects. They spend most of their time further out in the solar system where it's much colder. They have very elliptical orbits, which means that they come closer to the sun on part of their orbit. As they get closer, they obviously heat up. And for example, the planets have more circular orbits. So they don't get that much further and closer to the sun. But comets have very extreme orbits com you know, compared to the planets. So they get very close to the sun and a lot further away. So when they get a lot closer, what happens is they heat up and the solid ice as they have there basically get turned into vapor and you get these tails being formed. And I say tails because there are multiple tails. You have like an ion tail, which is from the charged particles from the solar wind that are interacting with the, the gas that's kind of emitted. You've also got a dust tail as well. And the dust tail is larger particles that are not as influenced by the solar wind. So the smaller particles get influenced by the solar wind considerably more. The bigger particles, they will typically follow more of the orbit of the comet itself instead of being blown away by the solar wind. So the dust particles, at least, will then leave this path around the sun, which is where the comet actually orbits. So you have this kind of dust trail all the way around the sun where the comet is orbiting because parts of that comet have come off as it got hot, not close to the sun. And actually, as that gas is kind of emitted from the comet it takes away some of the surface dust and that then creates this here so basically you end up with this orbit shaped structure which has got dust particles in that are still orbiting the sun just like the comet so it's like smaller comets you can probably think of really although they're not behaving like a comet they're just orbiting in the same manner now earth's orbit is a lot more circular it doesn't get closer to the sun and further away and what that basically means is that this cometary dust is going to cross the path of the earth so the earth is actually going to go through this cometary dust path basically and when the earth does do that that's when you're going to get your meteors so you're going from a, a part in space that's got very few dust particles or small asteroids things like that to an area that has a very high density of those or much higher so you get a sudden spike in the amount of meteors being created it's also why they're going to appear to a, come from the same part of the sky, because you're going through this path, I suppose, of dust that's in a specific location. So as the Earth moves through that, it's going to appear to come from the same part of the sky. So that's why you get a sudden spike or increase in meters at that particular part. Now, it's also why they occur at the same part or you know, the same part of the year, the same time of the year or the same part of the orbit. That's why we can predict them. That's why we know that, you know, next year, the year after, that the meteor shower is going to occur around about the same time is because the Earth is always going to pass through at the same point. So that's why we can predict them. That's why we know they're there. And it's because they are created by these comets that have left these dust trails, I suppose, in there. Now, this is a fairly simple diagram or picture to illustrate what's happening. But it's not necessarily true because it might look like the Earth is going to pass through twice. But the comet orbits are also somewhat inclined, which you can't see. Here. So three dimensionally, it's only really going to pass through one part of that dust trail as opposed to both parts. So you don't get two meter showers with the same comet. You're likely only going to get one. If you were to get two, it would likely have to be in the same sort of plane as the Earth, but it's actually more inclined. So you only get the one passage. So that's basically why they occur the same time every year, what creates them. And that's it, basically. But if you want to actually see some of these meter showers, then check out the actual times that they occur and find the constellations. And you should get to see quite a few if you pick a really good one anyway. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy this one, then you can check out some of the other videos.